Welcome to the First Congregational Church of Lebanon's virtual service. And welcome to our annual Christmas in July worship service. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, we welcome you. And if you've been with us right along, that's great. And we look forward to a time when we can meet face to face in our church on the green. So now, let's see if we have any announcements. Good morning, or should I say, Merry Christmas. Now, I'm the Reverend Dr. Will Sensiba. I'm the pastor here at the First Congregational Church of Lebanon, and I really want to say welcome to our third annual Christmas in July worship service. Now, many years ago, this started for me as a gimmick. You know, on the last Sunday in July, we'd sing Christmas hymns or carols. And over the years, it's kind of grown into the whole worship service. And I heard from parishioners that were snowbirds, and they said, I love Christmas in July because I never get to sing these hymns. I never get to sing Christmas carols in this church. You know, I'm always singing them in my church in Florida. In December, we're dreaming of a white Christmas, but not so much that there's so much snow that we can't have people come to church. And then there's the stress of getting things ready for the actual Christmas, right? The dinners and the parties and all that shopping and whatnot. So Christmas in July, it's more casual. It's the no stress version. And I think that's where this Hawaiian shirt thing came from. I'm glad that you're here this morning with me and with so many others. So let's worship God together. Good morning and Merry Christmas. So Merry Christmas in July. Meli Kaliki Maka. Hi everybody. Uh, it's been great to get out here and see people I haven't seen in a good long time. Uh, we've been quarantining at our house or on occasion going to a store. But anyway, it's great to get out. Hope to see all you soon. Oh. And Merry Christmas if we don't. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's a little chilly standing here on Christmas Day without a coat on. But all I want to say is ho, 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 and Merry Christmas. Good morning, everybody. And it's great to see everybody. And Merry Christmas in July. And hope to see you all soon. Good morning, everyone. This was just a wonderful morning to be out here at Carla's house and just to see everybody that I haven't seen in a very long time. But Merry Christmas in July. Good morning, everyone, for Christmas in July. I don't have a Hawaiian shirt to wear, but I'm wearing bright orange. It's so good to see everybody. Have a wonderful Christmas in July. Hello, all you Lebanese people from the First Congregational Church. This is Jim Donnelly, who's resting at his home, trying to stay out of the virus. Like the rest of you, I hope you're all wearing your masks and also stay six feet apart and uh, behave yourselves and uh, listen to Will.
today with the joy that fills our hearts. The good news is that Christ is born. We worship today with a longing that fills our lives. The good news is that Christ is born. We worship today with a hope that heightens our expectations. The good news is that Christ is born. We worship today with a love that transcends all time. The good news is that Christ is born. to redeem it for all time. Today we celebrate how, in one person, you came into the world to reconcile all persons to you. We pray for all who worship here today in celebration of Jesus' birth that we may grow as witnesses of your love. We pray for all of your people everywhere for the good news you have brought is for all. Let your good news be sounded in every place where light is needed. May your good word be not only spoken, but lived. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain.
dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Ha, ha, ha. Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. A day or two ago, I thought I'd take a ride, and soon Miss Fanny Bright was seated by my side. His horse was lean and lank, Miss Fortune was his lot. We got into a drifted bank and we, we got upset. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a horse open sleigh. church at prayer. So I'm just going to offer a brief prayer and invite you to join with me praying together the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are grateful today that your attentiveness to those whose hurt far exceeds ours. We are grateful for your presence with all who are joyful today, as well as all who cannot rejoice. Even if attending an online Christmas church service, even as many are physically distant, even as friends are not being as social as they once were. We are grateful for your relentless efforts to touch with your unconditional love those who are sad and lonely today, those who are afraid, those who are confused, those who feel excluded, those who take themselves to be unworthy of celebration. Give hope to those who find it hard to see light through the darkness. Give comfort to those who struggle on this day, yesterday, and even tomorrow. Give peace, shalom, a feeling of wholeness to those who are restless and confused. And show your love to all fleeing from shame, guilt, or life's greatest questions and concerns. Help us make right what was wrong. Help us make good what was bad. And help us to empower those on the margins and love those who wield their power. Help us to bring the lost and the lonely home to your loving community. All this we ask and pray 
in the name of your Son, our Lord, our Savior, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning is from Luke 1, verses 39 through 56. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy 
according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. Here ends the reading for this morning. The Christmas story is real. If we slow it down and think about what really happened, it's not a pleasant story in Matthew and Luke. And by the way, let's think of them as real people in these stories. A young girl finds herself pregnant and she's only about 13. Her boyfriend or her fiance isn't, is much older and the baby isn't his. He knows that she is expecting and Joseph is going to quietly dismiss her so he won't shame her. Joseph is a good guy and he's going to break it off. He's embarrassed. He's feeling betrayed. You know, people just don't get pregnant. And he knows that he had nothing to do with it. They both know it. But Joseph loves her and her reputation is in question. She's no longer sweet, innocent Mary from the village. She's going to be disgraced, shamed in her small town, and shunned by her kin. And you can be sure, because it's a small town, people are talking. And Joseph and Mary wonder what to do. The child inside of her starts to grow. Her body begins to change. Does anyone in town really believe that this is God's doing? We know that Mary and Joseph left town. The Bible says it was because of his census, but that seems implausible. Life must have been very hard for them in their town. Is it possible that Mary and Joseph had to leave town? Mary was, after all, that crazy kid that talked to angels. They were ostracized and marginalized. Is it possible then that maybe Joseph couldn't find work? I'm just speculating. If there was a census, why wasn't there a caravan? I mean, we can say that there was. We can say that there was no room for them at the inn because of all of the people traveling for the census. But it's likely, it's likely that Mary and Joseph were alone. Mary and Joseph escape in the night with a few of their possessions. They brave the tough nights, the fear of robbers and thieves, and perhaps explaining for the one millionth time the story of the angels and the Holy Spirit overshadowing them. A young woman who was in her last trimester on a donkey over the tough terrain of the Middle East. She's riding on a donkey in the ninth month of her pregnancy. Imagine her discomfort and pain Finally, the moment has come. Her water has broken and Mary is in labor. They rode into Bethlehem as Mary was having contractions. Who knows how far apart they were. But the baby was coming on this night. And it was the moment that only Mary could know. The pains of childbirth several minutes apart mark the beginning of the great event. They need shelter. They need a place to deliver the baby. But they're turned away from the inn. They can't even get room in an adequate shelter. So they're sent to a stable. And that is the only place, a stable is the only place that the unwed mother is allowed to give birth in the stable. 
And this is where the animals are. So how clean could that stable be? This was not a sterile environment. The animals were in the stable for the night and they might have been Mary's only company. Perhaps a midwife would have come to help Mary, but even though Joseph is a good man, he would not have been in the stable. It would have been ritually unclean, and therefore Joseph would stay away. It was against the Jewish law for Joseph to be with Mary. So if there was no midwife, then Mary was there alone. Mary, a young 13-year-old girl, all alone in a foreign stable, about to deliver her first child. What does she know about delivering babies? She didn't have Lamaze class or ultrasounds. She didn't have medication or a coach. She didn't even have a sanitary place to give birth. This baby would have little chance for survival. A 13-year-old girl trying to bring her own baby into the world. Have you ever witnessed a birth? I did, twice, and I thank God that my wife was with me there for me the whole time. The, the Christmas hymn says that the little, the little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes, right? We know that line. The little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I don't know about that, but I'm pretty sure that Mary was probably screaming and crying. And the animals, if they are there, are not going to be calm. And Mary is not going to be calm. Mothers, do you remember what you went through? Birthing a child is not pretty and it's not easy. There's pain, sweat, tears, there's volume. Imagine doing it alone without any medication or any machines. And Mary, went through the same pain that all mothers go through. Because the birth of Jesus was no different than the birth of any other baby. This brings us to the fact that Jesus was a real baby. He wasn't a toddler lifting his head up in the manger. Jesus was a human a flesh and blood baby. He cried like other babies, and perhaps those cries incited the animals. Jesus was placed in swaddling bands of cloth and wrapped tight. He was placed in a manger, a feeding trough. He couldn't be placed on the hay on the ground because the baby might be trampled by one of the animals. These are real people, just like us. It's easy to get caught up with the legends that surround the story, but at the heart of the story is real life. Mary and Joseph were real people, capable of feeling pain, capable of being shamed, capable of running away, but capable of incredible faith. Times have changed, but people haven't. Mary and Joseph would have had to deal with the same stigmas that so many people have to deal with today. Mary's story was not widely accepted, because if it was widely accepted, then Jesus would have been accepted by all. And the rest of the story, the rest of the Gospels would have been much, much different. But not everyone believed Mary. In fact, it's possible that few believed Mary. 
Because if everyone did, or if there was widespread belief in Mary's story, then Jesus would not have been born in a stable. Every Jew, far and wide, would have come to see the newborn king. And they wouldn't have forgotten about him within 30 years. There's been an incredible amount of legend placed onto that biblical story. Jesus looks like a toddler. He never cries. The Magi make it to the stable that night. The story has been stripped of all its pain. But on the other end of that story, there's a message of hope. In this dismal situation, there is hope for a savior. And this savior is a baby. This savior is a baby, it's God incarnate. This frail little person who's wrapped tight and placed in a feed box is going to redeem the world. It's a beautiful story, really. And there is the story of the strength of a young woman with incredible faith she persists alone, crouched in the corner of a stable stall, about to enter the unknown in fear, pain. She brings life into this world and she holds the infant in her arms and she puts the infant to her breast. And she can cry now. She doesn't need to be strong right now. She isn't alone now. She can be weak. She can be vulnerable. But only for a moment. A young mother holds her new baby and she knows. She knows that this baby is not always going to be hers that she's going to have to share this baby with the world. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. Sweet baby Jesus, this eight pound, six ounce baby is going to be called Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. On that night, long ago, in a borrowed Bethlehem stable, a frail baby clings to his mother. Tonight, he is hers. But tomorrow, he belongs to the world. Merry Christmas in July. Amen.
say you want to keep Christ in Christmas. Well, this is how we do it. So this benediction is based on a poem by Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. That is how we keep Christ in Christmas. May the Lord bless you and keep you now and always. Amen. Day and all the stars at night.